So my name is Patrick Sheha. I'm the director of the film If It Were Love, Si C'était de l'Amour, which is a film on the performance from Giselle Vienne. And her performance, the name is Crowd. Uh, and the, the, the film is a dream based on a performance. And it plays in Panorama. She's terrifying huh? in the show. <laughs> it's like a, it's a magnet. Like it really pulls me, like whatever she does, like to watch her, to try and be close. But then you get close and it's like, you feel that it's dangerous. <laughs> Some days it's like it feels horrible and it's like an assault. Yeah. And some days it's like, ah, oh, yes, please, like, don't stop. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if she knows how much of a, yeah, like a pull this is. It's like the black hole in the middle of the piece. Like, you know, if you go in, something huge is going to happen, but it just pulls you and pulls you and pulls you. I was thinking the other day after the after the show that I feel like I spend like half an hour trying to kiss Katya and it never happens. And then like a few minutes later you do and then you collapse and it's like, oh maybe it's good that I didn't. <laughs> 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 maybe that's what makes you collapse, I don't know. Because mm -hmm. it's just it's in that moment, no? No, it's after. Yeah, just after. Yeah. Because she's empty. Yeah. She's like, yeah. You kiss someone, she's not there. Hi, welcome to the Tadir Award. My name is Jean Bourbouvac, and this time we are discussing the film If It Were Love with creators Giselle Vian and Patrick Sheha. Hi, welcome to the festival. It's very nice to have you here. Um, tell us about, tell us a bit about the piece that is at the at the focal point of this film, Crowd by Giselle Vian. Can you tell us a bit about this project itself? Uh, so yeah, Crowd is a I would say theatrical, choreographical performance that I directed with 15 dancers that is uh, crossing several topics. Very, I think it's very much about uh, how you perceive, how you feel time, what is your, uh, how is time distorted through emotion. So it's very much about emotions and there are a lot of like time games but then the, I would say the surrounding is, it's, it, it looks like it could happen in a rave park in the early 90s. Yeah, yeah right. How did you come to this particular piece and why did you decide to make a film about it? Uh, it's always uh, strange, I'm not sure I decide, I think things are deciding for me. I know she's there for a long time, but that's not the reason. I, uh, I discovered the piece at the premiere, and um, you know, we all have this with art pieces, it can be books or films or dance pieces. Something, you, you, you recognize something, and um, something big for me. And maybe it's not what, maybe it's not what she put in exactly, but it's about uh, the feeling of love. And not what is love, of course, we don't know, but the feeling of love. And then, um, I don't know, there was something obvious about this moment. I, I think it was, because it's a crowd, like the title, yes. so 15 dancers, there was a big tour, and um, there was space for cinema in a way to, and you know, sometimes you just want to follow people, and I think I wanted to follow them. Even if I don't work with them, I wanted to travel with them. 
and so I don't know if I decided a lot, but it but came. Some, somehow it came organically to you. Absolutely this, organically. The, this and, idea. and the piece is organically, so, so it's yeah. logic, I think. But it was not, she didn't ask me anything, and I didn't, it's, it's not, it's not an explanation about an art piece that, yes. looked, that has no sense for me. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's a very, very intimate work and very intimate working process, and with the fact that we do uh, know for a long time, and I do love Patrick's work, made it possible that they could really go in there, because yeah. there's a lot of trust and uh, to do that, so that maybe that would be really possible that he could really go with his team in the future. Yeah, to let someone into that particular space, yeah, yeah. that's always a bit tricky. Um, tell us a bit about these characters that we meet throughout. Like, the performers build up certain characters and there are these particular scenes in it where mostly two on two, like one-on-one -on -one conversations between two performers about what do they bring to that character, but then somehow it also becomes very apparent that the character that they build in this piece also has a really strong influence on them as performers, on their on their personal relationships and on their personal lives. Can you talk about, a bit about these complex relationships that go on between character and performer? Perhaps uh, you start how you work with characters. Yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of interesting because the way I did work on the piece and the way Patrick did work on the movies is totally uh, interwoven. So, I mean, on the piece we did work very... I mean, there are characters and they all have... 15 people have their own stories and it's really done on measure. So that means sometimes it's very close to what they are. Sometimes it's foreign to what they are, but it's what they want to play. So what they want to play always is close to what they are too, yeah. so in another way. So the story is, uh, has been written on measure with them and with the American writer Dennis Cooper. So you, you, you don't hear any text in the piece, but all this, there is a lot of narrative behind. And, uh, and obviously because it's so much on measure and so much uh, related to them, it is related to their personal life. And so in Patrick's movie, they start to talk about it. What actually is, I would say, in the piece, but not you can't hear it. So yeah. you get to hear it uh, in Patrick's movie. Right. And of course, cinema often has to do with characters. And uh, I don't know how it came. I think they, they told no, Giselle told me maybe, and then they told me their characters. They talked a lot about this to me. And you can imagine it's like a secret because the piece is really, you feel it, but you don't understand it or you don't hear it. Yeah. And um, of course, what I'm really not interested in is in the question of identity, what we are. And so these characters, as Giselle told you, um, are always between what we are, what we want to be, what we want to play, what we dream of, a fantasy, reality. And so in the film, of course, it's not an explanation of characters because nobody could explain, explain this. It's not a, an explanation of what they are. We never know what we are. But it's this strange thing, you know, like in life, what we play and what we do and what we are. And for me, all this is the same level. And I think maybe theatre, I don't make uh, theatre, but cinema is a, really a beautiful place to try to find this moment where reality and fiction is the same, you know? It's yeah, it kind of blends together. When, when we fall in love, it's fiction. No? There's a lot of fiction when we fall in love. So, and so we work with them, but as you said, and you said it very uh, better than me, it's really, it's a basic idea that real life helps actors to play but it's a much more interesting idea that what they play helps them maybe to live. And, right. uh, and it goes in both ways. It's, it, it would be stupid, it's only, ah, my grandmother died and so I can play sadness. It's maybe the sadness you play can help you to understand something else in life. And I don't know, I, I don't see any difference between fiction and documentary in life, so, so neither in film. And, and the dancers were absolutely beautiful and generous with me because they, they played with this and they gave me this and yeah queerness has also a very particular place within within this world that comes through the performance we many of these characters that we just talked about that they built up are part of the of the queer community we have a trans character built up in this in this narrative we we have 
uh, suppressed uh, homosexual desires coming to the front. Uh, we are confronted with many sexual tensions within within this piece. So can you talk a bit about queerness and sexuality and what was your approaches, what were your approaches to, to these topics? Uh, I think, I mean, in all the world, when it's very visible in crowd too, the relation to desire is very extremely open. I do not understand uh, I would say targeted desire. I mean, I, I mean, it's obviously, I mean, in between people, extremely open, no matter what gender uh, people are. Uh, besides that, I think it's also orientated towards light and space and music, and so it's it's like I would say I'm really into open. I mean, trying to open up this sensitivity to uh, various forms of uh, eroticism. Uh, that is going obviously like towards various forms of humans but beyond what it is so there is a um, and then the team is the team is how they are and i work very much how i mean they're not play i mean that's the thing about the relation with variety they're also not playing for the audience they're actually that's i think that's for me, the strengths of the way they're playing. I mean, they're truly playing for themselves and, and these experiences shared with the audience. So they're following very much also their desires and excitement. And uh, I mean, I'm also very obsessed about the question of eroticism. What is this feeling of eroticism? And this, so it's also a way of being, a way of... Uh, but yeah, I mean, I guess one thing is I do not even understand, uh, I mean, I do not understand heterosexuality and homosexuality from it. I do not understand when there is a limit, yeah. basically. I see. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. And what was your question? I, I think that just the same idea. It's fiction and documentary. It's the desire can be everywhere, and the desire can be for a crowd, the desire can be for men, a movement, a woman. Uh, in my films, I think, I really, I have a big problem with identity, the word identity. Yeah. And so, but the same, what Giselle says, I, maybe that's why we know each other, or I don't know what. <laughs> um, desire is something very mysterious, and in my film before, Brothers of the Night, was not clear. There was a lot of desire, but it has no target. It was not clear where it goes. And for me here too, desire is something floating in the air. And maybe the film, really the own, the, the, if there's a goal, is to film this floating desire. Yeah. And uh, never to point out, ah, he wants this, she wants this. It's... And you know, when, when you film, what we really film is what happens between us. Yeah. And it can be hate or love or whatever, but a lot of desire in cinema. So I think I make films about this. Yeah. But yeah, I would say. Or this. <laughs> I, I also feel like like this is in the big picture, but I mean, often most of the time I'm very triggered working when I'm in love, and I think crowd is very much coming from a, a big love I had for a woman. So sometimes it's just very simple, and that's yeah. kind of so it's. And this, this love is just getting these various shapes. Yeah. You know, this fluidity of feelings and desire and all of that, I think it really comes through the film as well and also um, in the movement of the performers and how they relate to each other throughout the piece. Um, you mentioned it in the beginning that one of the one of the main ideas behind it was this playing with time, with the temporal elements. We see a lot of times these very slowed down movements, a lot of repetition happens. So can you talk about what was it exactly that interested you with this play and how did you tackle all of it? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's really about, I mean, in the end it's about perception. So when I'm, uh, for example, if you talk about the feel about memory or about love, what happens, I mean, what happens when you're in a moment and how is the memory already built in that moment or, or how is past, present, future living in one moment and how is the emotion stronger or weaker in the moment interfering with the perception you have of the moment. So these are the questions and great, but what do you do with that? And yeah. It's a long work and there are extremely a lot of experiments about it. 
But I think what we did find in crowd, uh, what is, I mean, uh, an exciting part to unfold is uh, this overlap of timings first. That means ri literally rhythms. You have the time of the music that probably goes about whatever, one hour, 30, uh, 90 minutes. The time of the lights, lights is going about, uh, uh, the light is actually going through years. And, and the time of the performer, that is, uh, they have different timings. So you could have, uh, you could, some people could be faster or slower, or could be past or present. Because of this repartition way of moving, we can do literally this overlap of timing, and they can be together and not together in the same time, or together or not together in different times. Right. And, uh, but it's very physical, because that looks like very technical, the way I say it. It's just very physical, and that creates this very strange thing that Patrick said about recognition is something that is obvious, I mean, especially with your live performance, it is present, you see it at that moment, but it feels also like a memory or like a fantasy or like a present or something that is fictional, but something that you recognize of your life. So they have like all these elements that is like how, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's very interesting that you say that. But then I also felt, in a way, that especially in those segments where it's like really slowed down, it kind of provides a space for very elusive moments to last. It creates a a, a space to. But isn't it something you experienced in life? To to be slowed down, something no, is not the right course. rhythm. Yeah. Of course, and if you, for example, if you desire or if you meet somebody, the rhythm changes, something very easy. That's very true. And the perception of your own rhythm. And we go out to clubs to have another rhythm. I think it's very it's very basic in a way, the, the pleasure of rhythm. And of course to go back to cinema to play slow motion it's a very it's a joke also. She makes real slow motion and then we come back and take this and you know cinema But, yeah. but do you think it's, it's I mean it, it looks like slow motion but they're actually I mean they're not like imitating slow movement they're like literally in a state that they do move slow and I think it's like it, it is it, it, it is extremely a sensitive way of moving that requires a lot of preparation but once you're in it it's totally about letting go and being hypersensitive and obviously they are hyper stimulated on stage and it is it has to deal with this with love and eroticism and this like super precision and that you can have this I mean it's 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 this mixture of super precise you get every millimeter and then this hallucination at the same time. It's kind of giving you an accurate feeling and more precise feeling and an even more hallucinating feeling. That's what we're trying, but they are literally themselves in their state in these states. So I think it, it is epidermic for the audience when you're sharing that. I mean you can feel it in your flesh. Yeah. Now we mentioned also that there I mean this piece takes place in the context of of clubbing and rave culture in a way. It positions it there, especially through the soundtrack, which really brings you back to a very pivotal moment in club culture history. And uh, what I was wondering, because you just said it right now, that there is a there is a reason why we go there, and this reason could be that we want to change that rhythm, we want to go somewhere else with our feelings as well when we go out. And I, I think that there is a certain kind of politics involved with that when you go there, when there is this shared collective intimacy, these shared feelings that that go down in that space between bodies, between... Maybe it's another society. Yeah, or exactly. It's a exactly. Society, yeah. Which, ha which doesn't produce anything, which is very interesting. That the, the clubbing society doesn't produce anything. I think that makes it, for me, very beautiful. Or at least nothing tangible. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I think there is one book that I think is extremely interesting on that topic, is the Accurate Share by Georges Bataille, talking about how much uh, uh, this, uh, um, uh, how do you say, uh, the contraproductive, uh, unproductive expenses are kicked out of capitalistic society. So he's talking actually, and it's very 
strange because it's very Western culture orientated, and in mo most of countries do have these spaces, still in rituals from archaic patterns. Where, but capitalistic society is kind of uh, 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 like trying to put down these spaces. Are I do think they're. I mean, I do not think. I mean, it's obvious that they're like core and essential human experiences, where there is sense and and and, and like like crucial experiences that are. But it's so. Yeah, I mean, at the very yeah. So at the, at the very beginning of the piece, it was actually the work on the ride of spring that I think is is actually dealing with uh, like these society patterns and, and the need of these uh, elementary experiences. Yeah, and then if you, because it was um, it was also part of the piece that somehow emotions flow very fluidly in it, um, and in a way somehow this emotional space is really projected down to the to the person who is looking at this film, for instance. And I don't know if this was something that you deliberately thought about, or if it was something that. That maybe we're unconscious of, or maybe something that just came out of it. That it really like pulls you in to those emotional spaces. I don't know when you do a film, I don't know when she said there's a piece. I don't know who will see it. I cannot think yeah. of him. Sure. Um, I have a, when I do films, it's very simple for me. When I'm fascinated, I hope other can be fascinated. But I cannot imagine what you feel. And I hope you feel something else than I feel when I see it. Mm -hmm. And if, I, if you get pulled in, it's not me pulling you in. So maybe you have let you pull in. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely like a team work but in that sense. Today in filmmaking, it's a big question for whom we make films. You know, even when you make yeah. a production, the question is, who is the audience? Yeah. But that's absolutely what we don't know who is the audience. Only te television knows the audience, or tries to know, but we don't know the audience. So I cannot say, ah, it has to, it's for a party crowd, I want them to feel the same, or I want you to identify. I don't know, I give you my fascination, I try to share it with you, so maybe with you I shared it. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm also wondering, because now you just pointed out that there was that there is something ritualistic about, I mean, it, I, it's definitely part of club culture as well and going out, but also it comes through this piece as well, these ritualistic elements, and there is there are certain peaks in it, which I would say like really ecstatic. And then that also is like, it also has a very interesting political implication to that. And I don't know if you could like shed a bit of light on this ritualistic element in the piece and also the the role of ecstasy maybe within that piece. I mean I think the question of ecstasy and the loss of control is uh, going back to what I was trying to explain with the uh, actress share of her I mean it is it is uh, experiences that are like uh, putting down or putting aside by capitalistic culture are uh, swallowed to try to, um, uh, how to say, uh, make them financially uh, interesting again. So, it's, so of course, it's a whole. I think it's a very essential question in, in our in our Western cultures and how. Uh, so, always, I mean, the reason. I, I mean, it's not only rave culture. I mean, it's. I think it's, I'm very fascinated or interested by. It any kind of uh, underground culture related to music and uh, alternative use culture. So I think that's where things are uh, trying to be created or invented by a new generation against what it is. And then eventually and critically it often gets swallowed back by capitalistic culture. So uh, I think it's, uh, I mean, I mean, for me, it's one of an essential battle of, 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 I mean, that we need to go through. And I think if there is a, it's basically for me a lack of sense. I mean, it's like a, a true nonsense society, and it's trying to uh, talk about places of meaningful. And I think I just put the hypothesis that any any, any person is looking for meanings and sense in its own life and strong experiences no matter where so which social background and I think 
this, I mean, ecstasy is kind of uh, this essential experience of uh, what we are looking for and how do we get it, how do we get access to it and how uh, is it is a tool of manipulation by, by, by capitalistic society. So I think this is also what we try to bring, I mean, yeah, take back that space and obviously I mean, we talk about Ray Party, but I think we, it's, it's a matter of uh, art. It can be movie or literature or performing art. And I think this should be also the spaces where we do encounter this kind of experiences. Yeah. Well, I was, finally, I was also wondering about that, um, because we talked about this, that documentary is fiction. Fiction is documentary in many ways. Um, that the film um, somehow goes beyond these, these uh, genre limitations and without trying to put any confinement on, on, on the work, this resonates very much the idea behind queer and queer politics. So my question would be, would you consider that your film shares at least because I wouldn't want to confine you that it's like a queer movie, but then that it shares the sentiment or the drive behind the whole ideology and the whole idea of queer. Difficult to say. Um, I do really movies when I don't know something, when I cannot put it in yes. words. And you know there's this movie, I, I don't remember if it was a good movie, but from uh, Bruce Weber on Chad Baker called Let's Get Lost. And um, I think when I do a movie and when I take my producers and, and the real thing is let's get lost, let's see where it goes. When I go see movies to see where, where it goes and I think emotion is always a surprise. So if I say it's a key, queer movie, I think I close something. There can be no more surprise, we expect yeah. something. Or maybe queer is quite good because it's quite open. But you know, so I really don't know what it is. And if I could tell you, I wouldn't have done the film. All right. Well, thank you so much for being thank here you. with us, for giving this interview. And I wish you a very lovely and enjoyable Berlinale for the thank rest. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.